have the updated deck? Or were we able to slide that in? I don't know. It's whatever is on yeah. the Julie yeah. gave it, so I don't know. No problem. So, welcome everyone. So my name is Steven, and Russell and I am a co-founder and business partner. We co-founder Deep Hire, which is software that allows recruiters to automate the screening process and spend all their time on high value activities like sourcing and screening, sourcing and client management. So for the updated slide deck, I, my very first slide is, we help recruiters make 25% more in revenue, right? It's about that simple. And right now, recruiters spend 40 hours a week, just like every other employee, on three different buckets, right? You have sourcing, meaning going on Indeed, pounding LinkedIn, doing cold calls for to find candidates. They do screening, which is exactly what it sounds like. They manage the interviews, they perform the interviews, they reschedule, they hustle to make things happen. And then lastly is client management. That's where they close the deal. They talk to the, do their hiring manager intake process. They figure out the needs of the organization. And if they can, they upsell the organization to expand out to other roles. So right now, they spend up to 50% of the time, 18 hours a week. Uh, we've talked to a thousand recruiters at least at this point. By far, everyone spends up to 50% of their time on the screening bucket. But everyone wants to be in the sourcing and the placing candidates bucket. Recruiters make money by sourcing and placing candidates. That's gonna be my theme for this pitch. They make money by sourcing and placing candidates. Period, that's the punchline, full stop. But 50% of the time is spent screening. So how can we let recruiters make more money? Well, they need a way to screen faster, get decisions from hiring managers faster so they can place, and they need to source more to make more money, right? So with Deep Hire, we piloted it with GMS, Group Management Services, with two of their recruiters, right? GMS, they're a staffing firm, kind of more specialized in RPO, we'll get to that later. But their recruiter would turn into an effective 53-hour work week, where instead of spending 18 hours on screening, she not only had to spend five because Deep Hire was carrying the other 13 hours, automating that for her. So she was able to spend all that time into the sourcing bucket and that client management bucket, which to her translates into a 25% increase in revenue. We do that in, with three key pieces. With video, collaboration, and automation. So with video, we save time for scheduling because a candidate creates a video of them answering screening questions, right? It's all through video, create a video profile, and send it out. The collaboration piece helps the recruiter talk to the hiring manager as well as the candidate, getting feedback flowing in all the ways, and eliminates the needs for meetings so that they have faster feedback, which of course lowers the placement time. And the automation piece is, it's very, very typical. We actually had to deal with this for our first pilot, is they had a typical time to fill. That means you source up a bunch of candidates and you place one. Time to fill was 30 days. For her, because of the hiring manager she was working with, it turned into a 53 day process. So for her, that's a almost a double loss um, of efficiency. And she always had to auto, or she always had to call up the hiring manager and ask for feedback, sending out emails, texting him, smother him on all platforms. So we took care of that piece for her so to automate all that. So the process is a recruiter uploads their interview questions onto our software and they get back a link. That link they then send out to different candidates, either through Indeed messaging, LinkedIn, email, text, right? However, they already talk to their candidates. All the candidate does is click on that link, they log on to Deep Hire, and they record their responses on camera to those interview questions. These interview questions are collected up into a video profile, which is then sent to the recruiter. Recruiters email the results, and they collaborate with the hiring manager to assess the candidate. That's how the screening process is performed now. And with the end result of Deep Hire is automating the follow-up until a candidate decision and feedback has been made. So this is what the software actually looks like. This is exactly what Morgan and Stacy used. Recruiter creates an interview using the website. They, all they have to do is log in. They filled in the position name. They can configure some things about the interview, like how long do I let a candidate answer the questions? How many times can they redo a question? And they just type in all their different questions they have. We usually see a sweet spot of four to five questions. If it gets more than five questions per interview, then we see candidates dropping off because all of a sudden it's adding friction to the process, not making it more convenient for the candidate. Once they click the button, the recruiter is returning the, the, that interview link, which is what they copy paste out to all their candidates. Candidates click it, they log on to the interview. We have a website and mobile app available to access the content and perform the interview. 
So on the top is the welcome screen, and the bottom is the mobile app. That's a mock-up of a person answering the question. We have the question overlaid right on top of that camera screen. And the candidates just record, keep recording their answers to all of these um, questions. Next step is we collect all those videos up into a profile and email that to a recruiter. The results are emailed to recruiting and hiring manager, so that feedback can be given immediately. Uh, this is an example, Grace Bullen, great girl. She went through the whole process. This is her resulting profile. This is almost like TiVo or YouTube for recruiting. Where, imagine you're a recruiter, or you guys, imagine you're listening to pitches. In the first 30 seconds, you already kind of have a gut feel of, oh, this pitch is going to go terrible, or this is pretty good. If it's going to go terrible, you can't just get up and leave. Right? You have to sit through the pitch and sometimes it take 10, 15, 30 minutes. Well, with this, same exact, <laughs> same exact thing happens to the recruiters. After interviewing people over and over and over again, a recruiter, they kind of get a gut feel for when a person just obviously is not a good fit. So with this, all they have to do, instead of having to sit there for the rest of the 15, 30 minute phone interview, they just skip to the next video. Which to Morgan, that was by far, that was the thing, she was delighted by that. That was her huge time savings for her. So this is the website for recruiters to view, share. They can assess and collaborate in that comment section right there. And as far as monetization, we follow a very, very typical SaaS business model. We charge recruiting agencies monthly per recruiter for the video screening tools, meaning that's a per seat model. So seating means if we sell a GMS, they've got 10 to 15 recruiters. We're selling them 15 seats, they'd be under that gold plan, which is $2,000 a month. We price this up against things like the things that they're already used to paying for, ATS systems, clocking around 15 to 99 bucks a month per user. LinkedIn Recruiter is considered the golden standard of tools in the space, and that can go from 300 to $600 per recruiter. So we're trying to price below LinkedIn Recruiter because that is, no one will be able to compete with the value of LinkedIn Recruiter but pricing above the ATS to hit right in that sweet spot where they'll still pay it, but they don't have to go up to the VP. It's right below where you have to get your CEO involved to make the decision. Now the recruiting industry is absolutely ginormous, but we took a bottoms up approach in analyzing how big uh, our opportunity here is. So on LinkedIn, you can get a sense of, you can, LinkedIn search filters are amazing. You can literally look up how many recruiters there are per different segments in the staffing industry. So that's exactly what we did, to see how many potential seats we can sell. So for RPOs, this is the GMS I was talking to you about, and Ryan Devotis we'll talk about later. RPOs are a very specialized staffing agency, where normally a staffing agency, they collect up 100 resumes, and that's not their database. Any of their clients, they pull from that 100 resumes. Now an RPO, they have many, many clients, but they're not allowed to share their database. Because when you work with Nike, Nike doesn't want you to share their candidates with Adidas, right? That's the whole difference in RPO, and that's why that niche is carved out. So because of that, they have to repeat the whole sourcing and the screening process over and over again per client. They're not allowed to share to create that efficiency. So they feel the problem the most. We're starting with RPOs like GMS and Orion Novotis. And just for that, based off of seating, $150 per seat, it's a 27 million a year annual opportunity. Going upstream, we want to step out into the agency recruiting world. That's now a 90 million ARR opportunity for agency recruiters in the US. And then for all of LinkedIn, there are over 500,000 recruiters using LinkedIn. 97% of recruiters use LinkedIn. And just 500,000 times 150, that's now 900 million uh, annual opportunity. And overall, just to get a sense of how huge, massive this market is, I mean, it was reported that by Gallup that it's a 200 billion plus global recruiting industry. I'm not saying we're gonna capture all of it, it's just to get a sense of the markets there. And to get to that market, we have three main strategies. Uh, the focus was something very quick, something very personal, and something that really, really reduces the time to market for us very cheaply. And social media has been huge for us. We've got a really amazing response on social media. On LinkedIn, over 500,000 recruiters are there, uh, they, LinkedIn actually has LinkedIn groups. There are over 15,000 groups. Each of them have got anywhere from 200 to 30,000 recruiters per group. And we average about 400 messages a week just spamming out on LinkedIn, cold messaging, and asking, hey, create this tool. Are you interested? At 400 messages a week, we actually saw a 31% response rate. 
which if you know anything about sales, that's pretty extraordinary. Usually uh, cold calling can go from two to 10% reach rate, cold emailing can be five to 15%. You don't have to double that just by use of LinkedIn. Commercial organizations is another great one for us. We are cultivating relationships and create partnerships with SHRM and Ohio Recruiters Association. Uh, we can show up to these small meetings about the size of this room and the whole goal of that is, although it's smaller, it's not to the scale of LinkedIn, it's much more personable. Where even though I'm only 22, if I show up as a vendor with my whole Deep Hire logo and I explain to them, this is, what, this is how people are recruiting today, this is the technologies we're seeing, this is how people are creating efficiencies in their process, now I've got the authority hat on, we've seen that the relationship uh, can start off on a very great foot rather than just attending to a conference call. So that's also been great for us. There are 30 conferences yearly in Ohio, over 120 SHRM meetings, monthly chapter meetings about the size of this room in Ohio. We've already attended two conferences with 61 new prospects. On Facebook, there, uh, Facebook also very, very similar to LinkedIn. Um, Facebook also has recruiting specific groups. And we just joined two different groups that have 50,000 recruiters in each of them. The great thing about Facebook is you can click a button to go to the group, click a button to see the whole member directory, and start clicking buttons to message every single person personally. All right? So that has also seen an amazing response rate at 28%, just asking to set up a demo and getting their thoughts on the tool. Now, as far as, here's our progress so far. Back in July is when we completed our $35,000 pre-seed round. That was purely to validate a few ideas. And back then we were on CultureFit, which some in here might remember. We're doing a culture fit matching platform that had sourcing and screening inside of it. Now in July and August, we got resounding feedback from GMS and a few other pilots saying the sourcing part, the culture sourcing stuff is cool, but the screening thing, that's really the huge thing that has given us a big efficiency and a big boost. So listening to that, we fully developed out that screening platform, for, forget about sourcing for now, completely focused on screening, and by the end of the next month in September, we had two paying clients, one in London, the other in Atlanta, and uh, three more pilots. So after that, now we're planning on raising a small round to propel us forward so that we'll be hitting 15,000 in monthly recurring revenue. Again, targeting mainly RPOs and enterprise clients. And then we're looking for a seed round injection in July so that 12 months from now, we'll be hitting 1 million in annual revenue. As far as exiting, in six, seven, eight, ten 10 years, uh, there's a lot to be said about the recruiting industry because it's really, really big. There are a few very big players that have shown a track record of acquiring young, high growth software startups as bolt on solutions to their existing products. Like ADP is huge, HireView is huge, Rainstand is especially interesting. Rainstand is a top four global staffing agency in the world and they actually have their own incubator where they invest at the Series A, Series B level. And with the intent of getting around, usually we saw on Series D, Series E, they actually acquired their investments. So these are very good looking exit strategies. As far as traction, looking forward, we demoed to FedEx in the past week. We're demoing to Sherwin Williams this week. Um, these are bigger enterprise clients because they are also feeling the pain. So we're not gonna say no to them. But the main bread and butter in terms of outbound are, are these firms like GMS and Orion Novotis. We judge everything by the potential of how many seats can we sell them. Orion has got 75 potential seats. We're gonna start with one, start with three, but with the plan of over six months, we wanna be expanding out to hit all those 75 seats. And that's the main financial plan here. Our feels like Orion Novotis and GMS, because they've been the problem most, they're really what we're targeting in our outbound efforts. And again, as I mentioned earlier, Morgan from GMS, she said that watching the videos at her own pace is an absolute game changer, exactly like you guys doing pitches. If you can TiVo through a pitch and skip to the next one at no social cost. And that Jumpstart, we also piloted it with their group, and he had some huge time savings on the scheduling side because he's a, more of a senior recruiter, so he's got to manage the candidate, manage the uh, so usually senior recruiters that got sourcers underneath it, and also manage the client. So for him, just passing videos around to all these four parties that are now involved is a huge time saving for him. Now, as I mentioned, for the financials, we're targeting 50% growth month over month. 
one client, we're assuming that's going to mean in our financials that that's going to be 10 seats sold over the next six months at the $150 price point. Now, again, the main reason and the main goal of how we can achieve this high growth is by landing and expanding. You get one big client like FedEx, only one department, that's maybe five seats sold, pretty good, but not, you know, but then expanding out to the other 50 over the next six, 12, 18 months. And that's how this revenue can start compounding. As far as competition, everyone knows, you know, like you guys probably think you're recruiting, very, very big, very competitive market, but DeepPower is the only tool that combines screening with the automation aspect while focusing on the needs of recruiters. Recruiters need a way to involve all these different parties and they need a way to seamlessly keep everyone on track and keep their thumb on the process, much like in sales. Spark Hire and HireView Ribs, these are our three main direct competitors and all of them are, uh, are attacking the big, heavy enterprise market. And for HR, uh, business or recruiting is a cost of business. But for recruiters, recruiting is literally their business. It's their main revenue driver. So because of that, we're able to tune the product a bit differently, add in a few extra gelling points for them to hit on their pain points and their friction points. And that's how we plan to explode and be very, very differentiated from this very competitive market. LinkedIn Recruiter, I included on there because that is, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's literally the gold standard in recruiting in terms of buying a product. So far, it's been the single most impactful product the recruiter can purchase. Um, but LinkedIn Recruiter is all for the sourcing part. So that's why we're writing integrations from LinkedIn Recruiter, funnel those people into the DeepHire platform, and that's how Recruiter can uh, have a very powerful suite of tools. So, uh, Russell and I, we've been working together for over you know, five, six years by now. Both of us have a very deep technical background. All the product demos and all the sales have been done by us so far. In the first month, in that month in August, we wrote out the whole MVP by ourselves. It allows us to move very, very quickly and very, very cheaply. It means any money that we take is gonna be extremely impactful. Um, now, throughout this whole process, even though we collected a few bruises, we also have a few amazing mentors through the Jumpstart Mentoring Program, actually. People like Rita, Ralph, and Tim, they've all, you know, they're all gray haired. They are domain experts in their field of HR, recruiting, and sales. Tim actually thought Deep Power was so interesting, he ended up being our first pilot, first paid pilot for GMS, right? Where he saw the opportunity to use Deep Power on their own recruiters, made the introduction, and we got rolling. James Hilton is our uh, very first investor as with, with TBF and they really guide us on the whole strategy process side of discovery stage of a startup. So we're asking for $25,000, we fell out our $100,000 round. Uh, our main bottleneck right now is literally our time. We only have 24, more like, what, 18 hours, six hours of sleep, so 18 hours of work, work time per day. Um, that means only so many appointments I can handle and keeping track of everyone. Our main bottleneck, is our own time. So we want to hire out and start automating parts of ourselves. So mainly it's probably used for sales marketing activities, hiring for telesales, and outsourcing some of the development so that we can spend all of our time growing the business rather than just keeping afloat with the business. Uh, the milestones we're gonna hit with this money is we're gonna hire that sales and support staff, launch our LinkedIn campaign, because again, 97% recruiters are on LinkedIn, that's the place to be. We also want to attend five different conferences. There are a few conferences coming up, like Staffing World and Sourcing Con. These are the places we want to be because that's where the big players are. And we also want to be acquiring 50 paid customers in under six months. So again, my name is Stephen Gates. I hope you find this. I hope you really took something away and learned something about the recruiting world. And at DeepFire, we're all recruiters to find their fit. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think we have a fund for these people. I don't know that was an issue. That we got two lawyers in the room. Maybe they can answer that. How would that, 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 that
that differentiate from face to face? I mean, you're eventually going to see gonna somebody, see somebody anyway. It's just that you could yeah. reject the person just by seeing the picture. Yeah. But you could reject it face to face yeah. too, if the, if that was the intent. Yeah. Yeah. Which we do hear that a good amount, especially at the really big enterprise. So, like I was talking to Dennis, we're demoing to Lu people like Lubrizol and Poly One. Both of them are pretty conservative in terms of their um, what they're willing to take bets on. So, the number one thing I was talking about to them is EEOC compliance, meaning we help them maintain a standard for compliance because they're both seeing a problem. And Best Buy, we talked to them as well. They're seeing a problem of how do you handle 50, 100 recruiters? Right? Everyone has to be asking the same exact questions. Everyone has to be doing the same exact process. So software like this standardizes that whole process. So in terms of the picture, I know that is a problem where they say you don't apply with a resume with your picture on the resume as the very first touch. But for where we are augmenting the process, we're kind of sidestepping that whole issue because we're now the second step. You've already met the candidate. right? You've already talked to them on the phone. You've already met them in person. So that's why we've been able to sidestep all of that. Steven, continue with that. So where does this video interaction take place? Did you just say it happens after you've already met and talked with the person? So or is this the initial screening yeah. where it's only been on paper you send out the mm -hmm. yeah, I got initial you. questions and they do a video? I mean, so for here, we're actually seeing a segmentation. This is where I think going forward, as we get more clients, we'll be probably focusing on one or the other. Uh, for recruiters like Morgan, she was hiring for sales staff. She would only have 10, 15 good candidates you know, per week. Um, so for her, she wants to talk to people on the phone first and then use this as a selling tool, a pitching tool for the hiring manager, saying, look at these videos, I, uh, you should really talk to this guy and smooth out that part of the process. Now for Stacy, when talking with her, she was hiring for a receptionist role. So she was doing 60 candidates per week. Then that was the first and a half step, where she still did the resume screening to quickly go pass fail, pass fail, quickly scan through their LinkedIn or their Facebook to see generally, will this person be a good fit? And then she created a list, created an integration, she uploads that list to DeepHire, DeepHire sends out the email to invite them for the interview. Is it, um, I'm wondering about whether the ultimate decision whether whether this ultimately helps you make better hiring decisions uh, and that got me thinking about whether there are certain jobs that this might apply to yeah. more than others because uh, if you reduce it I mean the screening time is interact right now it's interaction time with right. the candidate right right so this reduces interaction mm -hmm. replaces it with a video and then ultimately the hire has got to decide whether this gives them better candidates. Right, if, so again, this is where the segmentation comes into play again. For this really high volume roles, it's more to screen and rule out two thirds of the candidates. So I'm only actually spending time on the people that are serious, the people that will show up for the interviews. Which by the way, another huge problem is people aren't showing up for interviews. Yeah. 20 to 70% ghost rate, right? Um, so that helps them on that pain point. Going upstream a little bit, uh, it's, it's actually, we're seeing it as, again, like as a selling tool to the hiring manager, to the client, and keeping track of the client. So like I mentioned with GMS, they are supposed to have a 30 day time to fill, they ended up having a 53 day time to fill. It's purely because the hiring manager, he's already got one, two, three, four other priorities. Interviewing and hiring for the receptionist role is like his six, seven. Which to him, whatever. To her though, that's like $2,000, right? So using the video for her was a way to streamline that process, interacting with the hiring manager. Um, and, and that's where we see it helping out the most for her. Can you explain the difference of the process between your, yours and your competition? I see that the, I assume that they lead through the resumes and then they send out the videos and they get those results and lead through them, and then what, uh, there's a difference between what's the automation component? Mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm the, uh, yeah, gotcha. automation the differentiation. So, how are you? Their main differentiation is their very white glove, their ideal customer is JP Morgan Capital One. 
they create like the kernel is the base root video software, but they create 70% customization. Um, and they're all about AI behavioral assessments and technical screening. So they have target on the technical like hiring programmers. Spark Hire, their main bread and butter is honestly they want super downstream small businesses. Um, this costs 30 bucks a month, 100 dollars a month flat, unlimited. Uh, it's it's a quick integration to your job board, etc. So for them, all it is it's videos being emailed to you. For Deep Hire, speaking of that automation component, our huge differentiation is that you keep your a recruiter, right? My pitch to recruiters. You keep your thumb on the process the whole time. We let them know when a hiring manager has viewed the video, if they haven't viewed the video yet, and kind of strike all the irons hot has been our going theme here. For a recruiter, they close most of their sales, the good sales, in one phone call. It's almost like, like the salesman, right? Most of their placements. Um, so we try to give them as much data as possible so they know when the iron's hot and make that phone call right when the hiring manager is finished watching the video of the five candidates so that you can start pitching what the one that you liked and try to make the placement. So you can see that higher view was all about uh, how do I automate the whole technical aspect, the screening aspect of these big, big companies that wanna kinda catch up in terms of tech. Spark Hire is all small business. We are all about analytics, keeping your thumb on the process, getting feedback um, through the tool so that you can close the sale when the opportunity time's there. So the process up to sending out the video is the same, but then after that, once the hiring yeah. manager views the video, that's, that's where you're different. That's where the big differentiation is, yeah. All these tools, even RIPS, they actually mostly do uh, college recruiting, college campus recruiting. Their main customers like Denver University, but all four of us, it's literally the same process in terms of getting the video, but then what you use it for is wildly different. Where again, because we're for recruiters, we're all about quick integrations and automating the follow-ups and automating the poking, smothering the high nature to get feedback. So that's the biggest thing for us. Thank you. Cool.